Hey YouTube, PD Two Finger here. If you have a Canon camcorder and you've, let's say you've maybe updated your memory card, got a 32 gig or a 16, uh, 64 gig, and you're getting an error message trying to film on the HD setting. It'll say, cannot shoot at this resolution with this particular memory card. You need a firmware update what it is when this camera was produced the speeds of the memory cards were lower so they cannot figure out how this card is running so fast they just reject it so typically when you think of a memory card you think it's 2 gig 4 gig 8 gig 16 32 64 128 whatever the size of your memory card is well now they have another number on the memory card it's in a circle usually it'll say 2 4 6 8 or 10 then they have Ultra 10, but basically those are speeds. So 2 is the slowest, that's the old memory cards. And when you're looking at like a 6, which will run in these older camcorders, they without issue. If you have 6s, you're fine. But they typically only are like 32 gigs. So if you're talking about a newer memory card, a 64 gig, let's say you, you want to store more data on your card or your old card died and you buy a new one and you get that message it says can't do it well it's firmware update 1.0.4.0 and it's free so you can go on the Canon website and enter your information of what type of camera it is they will ask for the serial number and you can scroll around and try to find where it says there's a firmware update which is very difficult to do I just googled my camera name let's say it's a Canon Vixia HF M52 firmware update and sure enough some videos came up and it was a guy and he was saying you have to pay for the shipping well I just went through this process I just got off the phone with 1-800-652-2666 talk to Kevin and he's sending me a shipping label and it's free of charge they are not charging for I'm not having to pay for the shipping, which is different than I had read on one forum post and then in a video. So if you have an older Canon camcorder and you're seeing this message and you're having to throttle down the quality of your video in order to use your fancy fast new memory card, fear not, uh, you're going to have to jump through a couple little hoops and I'll go through that. Uh, first off, you, uh, but the end result is you send your Canon to camera. You send your camera to Canon and they do the firmware update. And yeah, it sucks that they don't let people do it. They should just put the firmware update up online and let people brick their units by doing it wrong. But they're not all about that. They're going to do them in-house. So what you got to do, you can go to the Canon website and... Basically, there's if you type in like Canon Service Center, you'll see all these locations right around you. You think, well, I can go drop it off. Those aren't service centers. Okay, there's two service centers. One's in Virginia and one's in California. So unless you're lucky enough to live right there, you're going to be going through this process and wait a few days for UPS to do its thing. So first off, you go to the website, you put in the name uh, like Vixia HFS 100 or whatever type of camcorder model you have <clears throat> you give them your zip code and then they're going to ask you for the serial number now to find the serial number you need to eject the battery and look underneath there where the battery sits there it is there's your serial number hiding that's a big word serial number your serial number is a 12 digit uh, doohickey you write that down on a card with the name of the camera, model number of the camera, firmware update, 1.0.4.0, and, and then write this down, one 800 652 So you call that number between 8 and 5, and you'll talk to a representative. They will tell you uh, it's free. They don't even ask you for the 12-digit number. They'll guide you to a form, which is the FSC, the Factory Service Center, whatever form and that's a PDF that you print out and fill out all that information he informed me when I do ship the unit I'm gonna remove the battery and the memory card uh, 
no extras, no charger cables, any of that stuff. Just bare bones, just the camera. Triple bubble wrap it, put it in the plain cardboard box. They email you a shipping label. So you print that out, put it on the box, tape it up. But on the box, I'm supposed to write, Attention Marie, firmware update only. So at least you're going to want to put firmware update only. And then you put that form, the FSC that you filled out, in the box. So they will, uh, th at that point, you take it to the UPS and UPS takes it from there. And when they get it and they do the firmware update, they email you. Now, one thing to consider, they're not going to like, if you have a broken camcorder, you can't go, oh, I'll send it to them for firmware update and they'll just fix it. You know, they'll just, they'll just feel bad and whatever's wrong with it, they'll put a new one in there. Well, they won't. They will not do the firmware update if there's a major malfunction with the camera. So it's got to be probably tip-top shape, I would guess. I mean, that's what he told me. There's nothing wrong with ours, so I didn't have to concern myself with that. So that's the process. Uh, if you're following along, I will update on this. It's been quite the saga of me trying to get a deal on a used camera. Lots of thrills and spills and saga continues so eventually when everything gets all ironed out and uh, we've got the microphone the remote the proper charging cables uh, all of that dialed in memory card uh, i will make a summary video on this process and give you my thoughts and if you're looking to get a uh, used camcorder that's a good one and not pay a real lot of money how you might go about trying to make that happen but uh boy it's not been an easy ride there has been a lot of hassle in this process so anyway we're on the good foot today i'm going to check out kevin matthews tonight uh, i was gonna film it and put upload it to this channel and when i looked there's already a pro shot three camera shoot. Uh, I figured when I heard there already was a shot of it up that it would be a lower quality shot because I've got this good camera now and I thought, oh, I'll, I'll shoot it, you know. And then when I looked, it's a really good, I couldn't even touch it. It's a three camera edit. And I also noticed that it was packed. So the idea of going in there with gear, being like, where do I set up? Or, you know, like, I'm just here unofficially trying to shoot this to put it on my YouTube channel didn't seem right to me because it is at a church. Kevin Matthews was a uh, wonderful DJ on the loop with Stephen Gary and uh, actually Jonathan Brandmeier in the morning. And then Kevin Matthews would come on midday to afternoon Steve Dahl would come on and then uh, Chet Kopic or Danny Bonaducci but that was the the salad days the the best radio I ever heard it was all talk less rock <laughs> they moved them over to AM 1000 which is an AM station and the listeners came because it was it was incredible it was there was nothing like it it was uh spectacular and out of all those guys I mean Johnny B was great I love Buzz Kilman and Steve Dahl is a legend and uh, you know at night they had like Chet Kopic I wasn't really into that Bonaducci was just so obnoxious but I still enjoyed listening to him and then they had this Mick Slappy uh, you know Man Cow I can't stand Man Cow I really don't like that guy I like the fact that he doesn't trust but he's like kind of into conspiracy theory stuff. I like that aspect of him, but nothing about that guy uh, is good to me. I just can't stand Matt Cow. Uh, and Mick Slappy, what was that guy's name? He, he's some guy and he's trying to be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But he was really Indian. <laughs> and he, he was from Rockford. Mick Slappy, what was that guy's name? Oh man, I really didn't like that guy. I really didn't like him. But out of all of those guys, Kevin Matthews was, that was just some of the most bizarre 
and wonderful radio. Uh, if you've never heard it, Kevin was really weird. And he did like some... <laughs> he would call a funeral and <laughs> get somebody paged to be removed from the funeral because they, they would call him and say, I want to get out of this funeral. So he would call the funeral director claiming he was a doctor and some... like a, Like they did some really, really bad stuff. They would call... A listener would call in from a lunchroom and they would go into people's lunches and pull them out and say, like, it's a ham sandwich with lettuce. And then Kevin would say, all right, I want you to stick your finger all the way up your nose and then wipe that on the lettuce and then put it back. <laughs> and they would... Uh, but I was on his show probably four or five times. I was on Stephen Gary two or three times and I almost had a heart attack when I talked to Steve Dahl because I was correcting him about something he said that was wrong but uh, I had a lot of fun listening to Kevin and he helped me to get my GR50 guitar synth as well so I'm going to see him tonight he's been off the air for many years and he's suffering a rare form of MS so he's been having kind of a tough time Kevin he, I mean he lost his job too he was a major DJ star in Chicago, and uh, he's got a ministry now. So I'm going to see him at a Catholic church, something called Broken Mary, about a statue of Mary that he's found that's brought some peace and spirituality in his life on a very deep level. And uh, I'm not a Catholic, so I've been taught have no other gods before me that Mary is an idol. So this is a conflicting thing for me. Uh, it's going to be challenging for me because I, I respect Kevin and I've been taught that this is wrong. Um, but I also see his faith. So it's a tough call. But, uh, I mean, he's got MS and it's affecting... It looks like he's walking very stiffly, like he's a hard time getting around. So I can't, I can't even imagine that. Well... I kind of can. So it's going to be an emotional night for me, as you can probably tell. Um, and that's, I'm not going to film it. I'm just going to go. And I don't i don't know, like, do I talk to him? I probably will. It's just one of those things you're supposed to buy a book and have him sign it, and I'm going to want to talk to him. I mean, I, I was on his all-injured volleyball team, and uh, that was at North Beach. It was an event. Uh, I was five feet away from Joe Walsh. He came out and performed a song called Meadows. Danny Bonaducci came out. That was before he even was on the loop. Kevin Adam is a special guest. And he singled me out, and they gave me a mic, and I was live on the air explaining what was wrong with me. And I told him that I lost my fingertips in a lawnmower accident. And I proceeded to... Uh, the people that had called in, there was nothing wrong with them, and they were really serious and really good. And the ball just kept coming to me, and I kept uh, blowing it every time they were screaming at me, Come on! <laughs> oh, yes. And it was at the actual, like, real nationwide volleyball championship at North Beach. So they, here they had all these pros playing, and then it was Kevin Matthews' all handicap volleyball team. <laughs> I love this guy. So, we're, yeah, I'm going to see him tonight. And it ought to be an interesting conversation if I can stick around and wait to line out and get in there last and try to talk to him. Usually if you do that, they think you're a stalker and they won't talk to you. So, because um, I mean, I, I just, I want to thank him and tell him how much all that meant to me and give him a hug, you know, of course. Is it wrong? So... I'll see you guys soon. Good luck with your Canon camcorder.